All right, we're having a talk for Trayvon. Trayvon Martin, a young African-American that was murdered recently in Florida in a gated community by a guy by the name of Zimmerman and there was a little residue found in a baggie in his possession somewhere and for that he was demonized and dehumanized by the pathetically ignorant such as the O'Reilly's, the Hannity's and the Limbaugh's. A toke for Trayvon. Murdered, I say. Murderous intent in the heart of Zimmerman. How do you know? How do you read it? It's a question of discernment. Connecting the dots. Being free of pride and prejudice on the subject. Which the people aforementioned too are not at Fox Views. Okay, those folks are guilty of the speck and beam morality. So busy trying to take the speck out of their brother's eye can see because of the beam in their own. Otherwise known, a couple of lines from a poem here, count and misses instead of hits. Point six, six, six. Okay. Could be a baseball metaphor. Ain't none of us batting a thousand, but if you're batting in the three hundreds, you're doing mighty fine. But there are folks who will say, oh, don't count that home run over there, that hit over there, you know. Don't you know about him and the way he is? You know, won't well, look at the game, they're just character assassination. That's what the folks at Fox Views are good at. Where the fox is guarding the hen house. All right. What happened? A young man walking back to his stepmom's place. Stepbrother, Skittles, can of iced tea in his hand. I believe it was iced tea, soda, whatever. Okay. He's stalked. This young fella is stalked. He's talking to his girlfriend on the cell phone. He's got a hood on. All right, as far as some folks are concerned, because of the pride and prejudice in the land, he was a foolish young man because he was wearing a hood and that was justification, not justification, but, you know, a reason to contribute to the justification of his murder. That guy was a man that stalked him, Zimmerman, and stalking is the proper word. And he had a weapon, and he ended up using it, and then he invented this cock and bull story how he was the one attacked. This grown ass man with a weapon? A young teenager who was just a stripling? Of a lad still? I mean, you really have to bend your mind to believe that bullshit that evil shit, because what comes out of your heart is what is good or evil, not what you put in your mouth. What comes out of your heart and the lies and deceit that go with it. If folks can't discern the lies and deceit behind Zimmerman's cock and bull story, it's because they are sadly lacking in the sermon. And here is a poem about Marijuana. Otherwise known as a sacred herb, the people like the Rastafari. So we have tribal cultural ignorance at work. There's a movie out there about white Irish drinkers. And you have the black, white, as well as the white, as well as every ethnic representation of the same mentality 
of where we were at, which Socrates described in Allegory of the Cave. And what was he talking about in that? He was talking about people having their heads so far up their asses they can't see for shit. So they need to have their heads pulled out of their asses, the shit wiped off their eyes, so they can take a good look around. Okay, that kid was murdered. Now, is that a white-black problem? No. Hate is the problem. I've got a story on another beating involving black teenagers. But before that, I'm going to kick a poem on marijuana. It's called Religious Experience. You all believe theologically, not thinking. Presumption be on your part. Lack and discernment, cause of spiritual pride. Old age of justice without the temperance of mercy. Rules and regulation, religion offering nothing new except the same old witch hunts. Hypocrites crying about religious persecution elsewhere while doing the same here in good old U.S. of A. Partaking of herb is a religious experience. To believe blindly otherwise is the usual damnable ignorance. There's a story on that, so we have the fear and where we're all black, white, brown, yellow, red, male, female, gay, straight, trans transgendered, whatever, cooperating in our own oppression because why was there a stigma attached to marijuana as something sacred? Why are good people so deceived that they think something good, heaven sent, is evil? And that's the blindness in the culture, okay, and in the world. For a healthy America, take the crime out of drugs. That will save more trade. Von Martins that are being killed by this, these Jim Crow laws that people vote to maintain every election. African Americans, Latin Americans, poor and working class Americans, Native Americans, Asian Americans, everybody involved, okay? It's a privacy issue. Fourth Amendment People's, what I put in my pipe and smoke is my business. Now I put that in your pipe and smoke that. That's how crazy this is. But I tell you, why don't we listen to the folks over at Fox Views for a while like the O'Reilly's. You don't know what's in those skittles. You don't know what people there with hoods, especially African Americans, are working on in their basements and in their garages and skittles, man. They'll fly out of a box when they somebody, see somebody white like the O'Reilly's and they'll attack them and devour them. There's poison in them, I tell you. We need to ban skittles the same way we ban marijuana and we ban heroin and coke because there are people in hoods coming to get us and there's one under every bed if we don't look out. Fear and anxiety. That's what's driving all of this. But the ignorance involved, the people are so gullible and naive as to believe the O'Reilly's. Okay? So there is the poem. Here's my story about black teenagers. I was living in Syracuse and it was early winter evening. I was, I'd been visiting my sister-in-law came close to the hood on the way home to my own place, nice and mellow, nice little buzz going on, you know, feeling good. And as I was walking down this one dark street, I felt 
something, you know, creeping up on me, shadows. I looked around and there were five guys stalking me. They stopped momentarily because they were busted. They were trying to catch me by surprise. So they were African American and what proceeded from there was I stayed looking at them walking backwards and there was a lighted street about a hundred yards away and I was hoping to get there and not thinking you're just reacting at this stage of it and they began to go into a trot so I turned around and made a run for it. I'm in my early 30s. These guys were way younger than me, way fitter, and I didn't get too far. Surrounded, and they start throwing punches, I start throwing punches. I'm able to hold them off for a while, throwing all, going all the way around, right? Just left and right and everything else, and I made a dash. Again, I was able to get away, got so many more yards, they cut up to me again, throwing more punches. Then one of them caught the tail of my coat, my winter coat, and I'm thrown off balance and I'm down. So then it was a question of going into the fetal position and defending myself, which I did. Okay, you can imagine the adrenaline pump the whole nine yards. Now before I went down, I looked in the faces of those five guys while I was going around trying to defend myself and they were throwing punches at me. Three of those young guys were young men. They, they were teenagers. They were still not fully developed men. And there was no hate in their eyes. It was just like they were along for the ride. The two ringleaders, 20-ish, early 20s, young men. The guy who was the leader, I saw absolute hatred in his eyes absolute. That's what I experienced. What happened was that there were, it was uh, two young girls who were college students renting an apartment, came out on their front porch, turned on the lights and said, what's going on? We're calling the police and the homeboys took off. But before I went down, before I was being kicked, I saw clearly in the eyes of all of those guys, those three young teenagers I could have talked to, and I have talked to many an African young teenage, teenager afterwards, because I'm a wordsmith. And they kicked me, I'm, you know, hey Irish, you got a poem. All right, when I lived in the neighborhood I lived in. It was like a United Nations area in Syracuse, okay, around Westcott, New York. So. I know from personal experience what hate is. So hate is the enemy. Hate comes on all sides. So enough of the holier than thou bullshit. There are people on all sides who are haters. There are nuts on all sides. It isn't all one is pure and the other is evil. Okay? Just because the color of your skin is white does not make you evil either. No more than black does. And that's the beauty of America, the people who see clearly and who see that was a young fella. Okay, now I forgave those young men and I was able to rise above the hatred and I'm grateful for the grace of that. And that's where forgiveness comes in. That's the philosopher's stone. And we all got to get to that place to be truly free like Christ on the cross when he forgave. Trayvon, that was his crucifixion. And after the crucifixion comes the resurrection. That's the power of the word. You say, where is the word? Look at all the people united in the ultimate reality of the word, what we speak in, and of the feeling of compassion, the feeling of outrage of what happened to an innocent young guy. Okay? I was a grown-ass man, and it was a different story. I was the sport for the evening. I understood because of the hatred involved in the history of America. Forgiveness is the key. But until we stop this drug war. Now there's a guy that was on Lawrence O'Donnell. A couple of guys on. African Americans. Tuesday evening, April 17, 1912. Lawrence O'Donnell host the show on msnbc.com and check out that segment and this guy let me check his name Neil Franklin 
that guy tells some stories and he's for legalization and he was a former police officer and he saw what was happening on the streets there is tremendous prejudice tribal prejudice that is not american happening with this drug war it's a jim crow mentality it's a plantation mentality and people have to fight, get their heads out of their asses and see that and stop cooperating in their own oppression do you know what would happen if we ended the drug war? That would pull the rug out from all the bloody drug gang activity. That's what would happen. So why don't we focus on the real enemy, our pathetic ignorance, that when we're voting for these drug laws, because the people in the big house say so, you know. Right, the boys up in the cashew. So we have to listen to them. Be good little boys and girls now and do what we're told, because we can't do any thinking for ourselves. Right you are now. The Lordships and the Ladyships of the I'm sorry I didn't mean to say that, your Lordship and Ladyship. We'd be good I'd be good now, good little Patty. Right you are. That's the bloody sovereign, crazy sovereign mentality behind these drug laws. Mass hysteria they were passed under. As absurd as making skittles illegal. Here's a poem on them and us. American version. Some good black and white, some rotten white and black, and everything in between. Their legs is the same. So there you go. Now here's shocking news for you. God has a sense of humor. He does, so she does. Now, there's the dividing line. If people can't tell who is evil with the that, with the, of, of that young fellow, tree one, I tell you, it's because you get your head up your ass and you're sadly lacking discernment. There's enough poetry, enough stories. This is a talk for Trayvon. And why don't we all come to our senses, stop throwing stones. Nobody's in position to throw stones. If you can't do someone a good turn, don't do any turn at all. People are people wherever you go. I heard that in the home I grew up in. Innocent folks, holy innocents. All right. Let's take each other one on one, regardless of class, color, creed, ethnicity, gender, gay, straight. It doesn't matter, transgender. We're human beings. We take each other one on one. Loving God is loving good. We can all agree on that. And who's your neighbor? We try and love our neighbor as ourselves. That's life's journey. Okay? For all of us. They're the riches. If you succeed in being a decent human being, a good Samaritan, that's freedom. Better a little with righteousness than abundance with wickedness. Going too far afield right now. Here we go with this poem to close out. Demonos, American version. I gave it that one already. All right, time to shut it down. Beginning to get a little uh, burned out here. So, going to finish with a talk for Trayvon. Bard Bart. Check me out on bardbart.com. Sport storyteller. That was a good young kid. Just make sure he didn't die in vain. Okay, all you good folks out there who have some wisdom, and to the foolish folks, we're on to ya, and you're about to get your due. A holy kick in the ass. Later. <laughs>